Hello everyone. In the series of learning virtualization and cloud computing, today we are going to discuss about cloud computing in a nutshell. So what we are going to cover in this particular session is, let's look at the agenda first. So this is the entire agenda of today's session. We will understand the cloud computing concept. Then I will include certain essential characteristics which require uh, for the cloud computing for its implementation. Then we will understand the roots of cloud technology, which is very important aspect to understand. And then we will put some light on distributed systems. And in the end, we will understand the benefits of using cloud based solutions. So let's start understanding the cloud computing uh, in brief. So here is the first thing that in the previous lectures uh, series of virtualization and cloud computing, we were understanding the concepts of virtualization. Wherein we discussed about the virtualization and its types and how we are able to implement the virtualization in our hardware systems. But if we have to proceed one step ahead means from virtualization, if we have to achieve the world of cloud, then what is the basic thing required? If you will see here in this diagram, this is from where we started. We used to have our classic or traditional data center approach, wherein we were using the servers which were dedicated to perform the specific jobs, right? Then we shuffle to the era of the virtualization uh, data center based technology, wherein we were able to run multiple operating systems on a single platform. So operating systems or if I say virtual machines or if I say virtual servers, that is one and the same thing, right? So the way we are able to achieve it is what we have already understood in our previous uh, lecture series. But now is from this virtualization, how we are able to implement the cloud based solutions. So if you will see here, till here, everything seems similar to what we were already having when we were achieving the virtualization. But in order to achieve the cloud based solutions, we need a new technology or a new layer, which we called as a cloud service management layer, which will help me in providing the various kinds of service offering that a cloud vendor will provide to its consumers. So actually, the transforming of virtualized data centers to cloud solutions, it requires a cloud service management layer on the top of virtualized data center. So this is what is required. But still, this point is not able to cover what is cloud computing actually. So let's start understanding the aspects of the cloud. So this is the agenda. What is cloud? I could say there are number of people who are working for the cloud based solutions, but all of them, depending upon their requirement, are having their own definitions for the cloud. But if I say, what could who could be the cloud uh, based solutions users, it could be the customers who are availing the cloud based solutions, right? And it could be the service providers also who are giving us the cloud based solutions, who are offering the cloud based solutions to the consumers. Now, for the customers, the use case for the cloud could be different. And for them, the perspective to look into the cloud is different than that of the service provider. So this is where the difference in the definition of the cloud arises. So if I give you one example, you can look here, we are learning uh, from these textbooks, uh, this particular course, that is one from the Rajkumar Boya and the second definition is from the NIST. NIST is nothing but a national standards institutes and technology. Now, if I look at this definition, which is also acceptable, but the way they are representing the cloud is quite different than that of the representation being done in the NIST model. So what does Rajkumar says in aspect of cloud computing? They say cloud is nothing but a parallel and a distributed comp computing approach, which helps us 
or which is consisting of a collection of virtualized computers that are dynamically provisioned and presented as one or more unified computing resource based on SLAs, what are the service level agreements, right? So this is how they are defining. So the key terms here, you need not to understand this definition on the very first day about the cloud as you would not be able to understand each and every terminology here. But the key aspect here is the parallel and distributed approach, which is the essential requirement. The virtualization facility that we have already run, uh, learned and which is important also to understand and to implement the cloud-based solutions based upon some terms and conditions, which will be defined in the SLA, depending upon the service provider or the consumer who is using this cloud-based solution. Okay, this is the one aspect. Now, if we look at the other aspect of defining the cloud, it is a pay per use model. Definitely it is, you know, why cloud is famous? It is only because it is a pay as you go model means you are paying only for the resources you are going to utilize. It is highly available, convenient, on demand network facility to a shared pool of configuration resources. Exactly, this point is also valid, but the difference in both the definition is quite high. So how to understand and how to answer someone if someone say, what is cloud? So usually the way I teach my students is that you need to understand the basic things or basic characteristics which cloud offers. So what are those basic characteristics? These are those basic characteristics which cloud computing provides. So whenever someone will ask you about what is cloud computing, simply answer them. It is a way to rapid uh, to provide rapid elasticity, measured service, broad network access in a pool of resources. And it is having on demand self service uh, computing mechanism. So when we are able to combine all of these offerings together, we are able to get a complete cloud based solution. Now, what do you mean by the rapid elasticity here? Rapid elasticity says if the requirement of the customer increases or decreases, okay, based upon them, we can scale up our resources and scale down our resources means if today I require 100 servers, I can instantly get the 100 servers by simply scaling up my resources. But now, if my requirement has decreased from 100 servers, now my, I, my business is not growing fine. I need uh, not 100 servers, my work only suits 40 servers. So why should I pay for the extra 60 servers? I can do this rapid provisioning and deprovisioning of my resources using this rapid elasticity feature that cloud provides. So this is one of the characteristics that define cloud computing. Similarly, cloud is a measured service. As discussed in the previous definitions, it is a pay as you go model. It means depending upon the requirement of the resources that you want to look or to deploy in the cloud based uh, environment, you are going to pay only for the time you are handling or dealing with those resources. So usually you are charged or billed for per second basis on some resources or even you can be charged per hour basis per resource also. So it de completely depends upon the a service level agreements that you have uh, within the your cloud vendor. Now third characteristics which is also very important is a broad network access. You are not limited to use your virtual uh, your cloud based solutions only from one specific kind of hardware. You can use the uh, the any kind of network access means if you have the internet facility available on any of your gadget, you are good to go with the cloud-based solutions. 
you are not restricted to use it only through the mobile only through your desktops or only through your workstations no you can actually avail the facility of cloud based solutions by uh, getting internet access on any of the electronic gadget that you are having so this is the power of cloud computing apart from that we have a fourth important characteristic which is the resource pooling so when you visit to the cloud vendors right they are providing you a complete set of pool of resources available for you like let's suppose your uh, requirement is for vcpu right means virtual cpu so if you are uh, you can pick on the basis of your demand one vcpu also two vcpus also four vcpus also six vcpus also and so on so forth even you within the vcpu you can also pick for gpu and other processing capabilities so is with the storage also now you want to provision the uh, hard disk for the storage you can get it you want to provision the ssds right you want two ssds eight ssds or even 100 ssds you will get it because everything is available in the pool of the service provider who is offering the resources these concerned resources so this is the other important characteristics to understand last but not the least is on demand self service it means that the cloud service provider is not going to your home or to your doorstep and will advertise for their service it is you means the customer who has to visit the cloud solutions and have to pick the resources of their choice okay you are not been you forced to use any particular resource it's completely up to the customer's need and necessity that which resources they want and how long they want to use those resources so these are the important characteristics of a cloud computing if you will understand these in uh, in a proper manner it means that you are able to understand the cloud based solutions so whenever someone is going to ask you about cloud computing instead of get uh, cramming these definitions or any other definition that you will get from the cloud you can simply let them know any computing capability which has all of these characteristics present are fulfilling the requirements of a cloud based solution now let's understand in the next step that what could be the use case who and how we would be able to use the cloud based solutions so here in i have taken one example let's suppose this is a cloud service provider this cloud service provider can be aws based it can be google cloud platform it could be microsoft azure salesforce dot or even the vmware now the point is these all are the clients or the consumers and every client or consumer is having his or her own use case if you will see here the client of this cloud service can be an individual user also or it could be an complete organization also organization can also be the client of an uh, and any of the cloud service provider so this is the important aspect who can use the cloud based solution anyone you me or even if one organization who want to opt the cloud based solutions everyone can utilize it now if there is one individual how could one individual would like to use the cloud based solution a very simple aspect you are having your important documents with you now you want to keep them as a backup and you want them whenever you need your resources right or those documents uh if you are sitting anywhere right you should be able to get your documents back or you could view you those those documents using your internet capability so for that for the backup solutions or a secured backup solution any person can use the cloud based solution this is a full fledged example of if you are using the google drive for storing your or data or even for the one drive by microsoft similarly if there is any organization it the if the organization needs to grow means they want to increase their 
uh, vision right but cannot spend much to buy new servers now the point is organization need more computing resources as the demand of their business increases but at the time due to any financial issues they are not in the state of mind to purchase new servers or the storage facility so what is the solution for them a very simple solution is they can go for on demand computing resources right so they need virtual servers they can go to any of these cloud vendors can acquire the virtual servers so as i said in the previous slide it is completely on demand self service so what are the requirements of a service or an organization they want virtual servers or they want virtual storage spaces so based upon that those uh, resources would be av made available to them so next use case is like my organization wants to test a software in different platforms before investing on it so definitely purchasing the platforms or software toolkits are really uh, you could say that uh, very costly and expensive kind of deals so organizations usually want to get the testing environment before that so a good way to perform the testing is to go to the platform as a service facility provided by the cloud platforms like if i give the example azure is very much uh, highly famous in this field so what you can do is you can take trial on wide variety of platforms and infrastructures and you can test your in, uh, infrastructure and the tools and then you can think of, uh, about spending on them in that way last but not the least say so if you want it, uh, like this is this is the another use case i need a word processing application for a brief period to prepare my documents like you are all aware that google uh, drive provide us the facility of all the documentations like you can get the online uh, doc files right you are having the facility of sheets which will resemble the excel sheets also so you can get all those facilities on demand basis from your cloud based solutions so these could be the use cases when and how you would like to use the cloud based solutions and they depend upon the needs of the client and the client can be a single individual user also means for your personal use also you can acquire the cloud based solutions even for their for the organization for growing the business for dealing with the client based issues right we can use uh, the cloud based solutions